Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. My quintessential question that I pose to the millions of YX students that take a mathematics tests that we are conducted by the West African Examination Council in the Gambia, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Nigeria and that I also post to the millions of JAM students in Nigeria that take mathematics tests that was conducted by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board is this. What is the importance of abstract mathematics? My answer to that quintessential question is this. Mathematics is the bedrock of the Nigerian economy. I studied mathematics in the United States and did so full time for the 16 years onward of March 25, 1974. I studied mathematics from the storyboard to the blackboard to the motherboard and studied it across boards because my general circulation modeling for foreseen otherwise unforeseeable global warming demanded that I codify the laws of physics into the partial differential equations of calculus and into a system of equations of algebra. The laws of physics that I codified into mathematical equations included the second law of motion, the law of conservation of mass, the law of conservation of certain chemical species, the first law of thermodynamics, the equation of state, and the radiative transfer equations. As a research computational mathematician that embarked on his solitary quest for the fastest supercomputer that is also a new internet, my focus was on how to parallel process and solve those grand challenge problems that are the toughest problems arising in high performance computational mathematical, mathematical physics. Back in the 1970s, my search for the parallel processed solutions of initial boundary value problems of mathematical physics was mocked and trashed as an unrealistic fishing expedition. Parallel supercomputing was the formidable foe in the seven decade long battle to solve the most computation intensive problems arising in STEM fields. The parallel supercomputer is a rethinking of the way the conventional supercomputer solves a grand challenge problem. Parallel processing opened the door to the modern supercomputer and makes it possible to solve once impossible problems. After my discovery of parallel processing, based the new set lines on what of July 4, 1989, every supercomputer manufacturer started integrating parallel processing into its new supercomputers. Parallel processing is the crown jewel of the supercomputer. When I announced my discovery of practical parallel processing, and when I did so on the 4th of July 1989, it wasn't heralded as a breakthrough in supercomputing. At first, my discovery was mocked, dismissed, and rejected as a terrible mistake. The reason my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing was rejected was that I didn't look like Albert Einstein. 
I was born and raised in the heart of Sub-Saharan Africa instead of born and raised in Europe. Back then, some were offended that I became a famous supercomputer scientist and that I was described in newspaper profiles as the most intelligent man in the world. I was called a quote-unquote black genius because my contributions to knowledge occurred at the intersection of the frontiers of knowledge in the fields of mathematics, physics, and computer science. The year 1989 was a period the term black genius was almost traumatizing for sympathizers, sympathizers of white nationalist groups that endlessly denigrated my contributions to the development of the supercomputer. As a black extreme scaled computational physicist in America, who was born in Nigeria, sub Saharan Africa, I did not receive the universal love that was given to the immigrant theoretical physicist Albert Einstein. Within closed doors of the supercomputing community, I became a divining rod for this score. Some liked me, some don't. I was a line in the sand. Back in 1989, instead of celebrating my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing, some became obsessed with assassinating my character. They tried to destroy my inner core. They tried to prove me wrong. They questioned my intellect. Yet my work on parallel supercomputing was way over the heads of critics writing negative things about mathematical techniques and supercomputer technolo technologies that lack the intellectual maturity to understand. Because parallel supercomputing was over the, over the heads of the 25,000 vector supercomputer scientists of the 1980s, I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputers of the 1980s. After 1989, I was attacked not because parallel supercomputing was not used to solve grand challenge problems, but because my critics were jealous that a, sub that a black sub-Saharan African was ranked with the likes of Albert Einstein. <laughs> Insightful and brilliant lecture.